Hey everybody and welcome to the Denzi Blitz. I'm your host Mike from Electric City Sentai Denzi Caster and this week it is part three of our eight part look at Space Sheriff Gavin or if you prefer Uchu KG Gavin, the guy here in the center in silver. Um, today we are looking at episodes, as I check my notes, uh, we're checking over episodes 13 through 18 today. Uh, so let's just do some quick synopses and then we'll go through my thoughts on the episodes as a whole. Uh, episode 13 is Danger Retsu, The Great Reversal, uh, where the Maku make use of a terrible device to merge a double man and a big-eyed monster, Bim monster, to create the Double Bim. And can Gavin actually defeat this much powerful new enemy? Uh... Episode 14 is A Parting of Love and Sadness, The Final Blow, which is part two of a two-parter with the first double BIM introduced in the series, uh, where Commander Quam and Marin actually come to Earth to train Gavin to fight this powerful new foe. Uh, episode 15 is Illusion, Shadow, Maku City, where the Maku plan to sacrifice Space Sheriff Gavin as part of the anniversary celebration of Maku City. Uh, episode, let's see here, number 15? Nope, 16. I think I've got these out of order. Nope, episode 16 is My First Love is a Jewel's Radiance. Goodbye, Galaxy Express, uh, where Wakaba meets a strange new student in her class, uh, who the Maku is after. And then episode 17, The Running Time Bomb, the bad guy who rode a police bike, uh, in which Mimi uh, falls head over heels for a, an Earth policeman, and Gavin finds himself uh, becoming increasingly jealous uh, until the Maku take the man hostage and wind up uh, with Gavin in a race against a ticking time bomb. And then uh, episode 18 is Princess Contest, Nonsense Ryugu Castle, uh, episode 18, where uh, girls are disappearing from a Japanese beach, and Gavin winds up being led to think that it is a nefarious plot of the Maku. So, uh, going through this batch of episodes and anything big or important out of them, um, realistically... Um, as we've said before, Gavin, being a product of the 80s, specifically 1982, uh, is highly episodic. So um, when there is meta plot, it is um, usually not much, to be perfectly honest. Um, and it's sometimes few and far in between. Uh, I was really, really surprised for there to even be a two-parter, uh, especially early on in the series. We are um, a little more than a third the way through at this point um, with, or close to a third of the way through, with um, the episodes Danger Retsu and uh, A Parting of Love and Sadness, uh, the two-parter with the double BIM. Um, essentially up to this point, uh, Gavin has found himself fighting generally two monsters an episode. There is a double man which is um, essentially a weaker monster, is the vibe you get off of it, physically weaker, but more intelligent, who has the ability to disguise itself as any other living being, hence the term double man. It becomes a double of that person, or double woman. Um, the Bim Monsters, which is a slightly repetitive name, um, it, it takes its name from the old... Uh, pulp sci-fi adage, BIM, bug-eyed monster. Um, but the BIM monsters are generally far more powerful, more physically imposing, but a lot dumber. So in this two-parter, we come across a, uh, a double man who is not willing to do Don Hara, the head of the Maku's, bidding. Um, but he comes upon a plan that if he were to somehow be merged with a BIM, then uh, he would have all of his intelligence and savvy, but he would have all the physical strength and power of the bug-eyed monster and therefore be, uh, at least by the standards of the Maku, nigh unstoppable. Um, 
And in the first half of the two-parter, it really is one of the first times we ever see Gavin actually in trouble and uh, possibly facing defeat. Um, it is one of the very few times that a monster has survived one episode into the next. Um, the way they create this type of monster is fairly interesting in that um, there is a transport device that a scientist manages to create where you can transport two different entities, one from each tube, and merge their essences into a central cylinder, creating a new life form. Um, so it's an interesting concept. It's basically a riff on the old Star Trek transporter accident ideas. Um, the science, of course, if you're into that sort of thing, it's really dodgy at a point, but it's a kid's TV show from the 1980s, so why are you trying to figure out the science of it? Um, but it's an interesting concept, and at the end of the day, um, and it's always something that intrigues me, and I enjoy seeing it happen in this type of show, or any kind of superhero show, is where, um, as silly as it sounds, everybody wins. Uh, the good guy wins because the immediate threat to the innocent people of wherever is uh, is stopped. But the bad guys win because their overall plan is furthered. And we actually see that here. Um, the uh, overall plan that uh, we want to have stronger monsters is fulfilled. They have the device, they have the machine, and pretty much from this point forward, the monsters are all double bims instead of double man or double woman, or simply a bug-eyed monster. Um, the introduction of Commander uh, Quom and Marine on Earth, actually coming to Earth to train Gavin, I really enjoyed because up to this point, um, Marine has come to Earth once to help save Gavin's life, um, and we see that she has some medical expertise. Commander Quam's never come to Earth before, and with Commander Quam, basically, up to this point, he is simply a talking head at police headquarters. Uh, now we see that he's actually uh, himself a very skilled warrior, uh, more skilled than Gavin, uh, which makes sense. So I rather enjoyed that. Um, the geek in me would have really loved it if Quam had had his own hero form, um, but one of the things that uh, Gavin does a pretty good job of is showing you that these uh, these Space Sheriff armors and whatnot, and we see this throughout the Space Sheriff uh, franchise, uh, the actual armors and whatnot are very rarefied. Um, if you look at just the original run of the Space Sheriff shows, so Gavin, Charvan, and Scheider, there are only three Space Sheriffs in armor, and that's the three titular heroes. Um, we are left to infer that Space Sheriff Voicer, which is Gavin's father, did not have an armor. Uh, Space Sheriff Allen, who has not yet shown up, but he is a character throughout, um, does not have armor. Quom, apparently, you know, one would assume was a sheriff, he doesn't have armor. And uh, Mimi, along with the female assistants, uh, Annie, and I forget who the other one is, to be perfectly honest, from Sharvan and Scheider, um, they don't have armors, but they are all space sheriffs. So we see that that's, that's something very unique and rarefied. So I, I applaud the setting for abiding by its own, uh, at this point, very fledgling rules. Uh, but at the same time, it would have been cool. Um, I did think it was kind of amusing that uh, while Gavin's sword, and it's something that when I first started watching this, I noticed that Gavin's laser blade, the sword, the hilt was actually a little different than what I was used to. I'm very accustomed to, um, and I will actually grab the Gavin figure art here. I am used to seeing, as we hold this a little closer to the camera, I'm used to seeing this particular style of hilt, where it's very sleek and simple, yeah? Well, the um, first sword that we see him with in the show, the spacer on it looks more like a traditional sword with sort of a... Uh, up-pointed part of the spacer, uh, as if to catch an opponent's blade. Um, and then in later episodes, it switches to that with no rhyme, reason, ceremony, explanation, nothing. Um, so I found that interesting. Um, well, when Quam shows up, the sword that he uses is the first laser blade, um, which apparently is also uh, a big factor in 
the Gavin Decker Ranger movie that came out earlier this year. I still haven't watched that all the way through, but that's going to be coming up on uh, this month in August as our uh, patron-exclusive Denzi Blitz. So keep an eye out for that if you're one of our patrons. If you're not, please become one. But if you want to see that one, become one of our patrons, and you'll be able to check that out. Um, so we have this, yes? So I like the sword, um, and Quom has a shield, too, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, so I, I was really intrigued by this two-part episode because it's just sim sim simply something that you don't expect out of the highly episodic world of uh, late 70s, early 80s uh, superhero tokusatsu shows. Um, going through the other episodes, to be perfectly honest, um, Illusion, Shadow, Maku City, uh, My First Love is a Jewel's Radiance, and uh, The Running Time Bomb um, are all fairly forgettable episodes. Um, I don't think they're anything that, that you would have to watch uh, to have the essential Gavin experience. I think episodes 13 and 14 fall in that category with the two-parter, but uh, 15, 16, 17, not so much. Um, there's, you know, some very typical tropey stuff that goes on in the episodes, um, some fairly stock plots, but, uh, and it's not to say that they're not entertaining, because they certainly are, but um, I don't think it's a, a must-have viewing for the experience. Now, with that said, um, you get to uh, episode 18, Princess Contest. This falls into the same category. It is not must-see TV. Uh, as far as the overarching plot is concerned. But I bring it up only because it really, really surprised me to see this trope show up in Gavin. Um, it is not at all unusual for tokusatsu. Um, well, I shouldn't say uh, for tokusatsu. It's not at all unusual for anime in almost every series to have, at some point, the swimsuit episode or the beach episode. Um, but I very rarely have ever seen it in tokusatsu, to be perfectly, perfectly honest. Now, that might be a, fact, a product of the fact that most tokusatsu I've watched uh, over the years has come from the uh, 2000s, from the 21st century. And at, at a certain point for a live-action show, that seems to have fallen out of vogue. But in the 80s, obviously, sensibilities were different. Um... And here it is. It's blatantly what it is. It's a swimsuit episode. It's this whole thing. But I give credit where it's due because at least they have an excuse for it. Um, you basically have an undersea monster, a water-themed monster, who is searching for a princess. And it, it reeks in certain ways of a very kidnappy version of Cinderella where he's looking for this princess whose feet will fit this particular shoe, which is basically um, a, a lady's shoe that has been bedazzled with sh uh, seashells. And he keeps kidnapping beautiful women from the beach until he can find the one that fits the shoe. Um, in and of itself, that, that's the long and short of it. And I found it amusing. Um, and we see some more of um, of our reporter, our UFO reporter, and we see a little more of some of the, the supporting cast um, in this episode than we normally would. And Mimi plays a, a considerably larger role for this episode. Uh, uh, I should say considerably larger, but plays a an interesting, uh, somewhat more large role than she normally would um, in these. But all in all, at the end of the day, it really is just the swimsuit episode, but it, at least it has an in an interesting little plot that explains why they have a swimsuit episode, um, which is more than I would have typically given, um, well, a swimsuit episode. More credit than I would have given a, a beach episode or anything like that. Um, they had an excuse for the story. Uh, the story was an excuse to put them on the beach and see this, whereas the concept was uh, to follow the old... Uh, saying something for the dads. So just to see a bunch of, of girls running around in bikinis and swimsuits. Um, so, uh, but if you're looking strictly for plot and not for eye candy, uh, you could probably skip it. So uh, realistically, looking at, at this batch of episodes, it really was very stock. Um, the two-parter caught my attention 
and I really, really enjoyed it. And I would add that to your essential Gavin viewing list. Um, I'm still enjoying the show. Um, it, there's uh, some of the, the Maku space scenes are becoming a little more and more trippy. You can tell as they are learning more and more of what they can and can't do. Um, and where, how far can they push things? Uh, I'm really digging uh, Kenjioba in this role more and more every time I watch him. Because uh, when you see Kenjioba in the newer movies, he, as Gavin, he is portraying a very different character than he does here. In the newer movies, he is the older, wiser, seasoned police veteran. Whereas here, he is the young, hot-headed, rookie cop type character. And to see him grow into that level of confidence, not simply the character, but also the actor. Because this was Kenji Oba's first leading role in Tokusatsu. He had been in Denzi Man and in Battle Fever J, but in both of those cases, he was one of the Rangers, part of the ensemble, but he wasn't wearing red, so it kind of makes him supporting cast. Um, but in this show, it's it's him. He's the lead, and it, it really, you can see Kenji Oba growing as an actor, and you see, um, you see Retsu growing as a character, and I really, really dig that. Um, so that said, the next batch of episodes, when we get back here for part four next week, we're going to be on episodes 19 through 24, which means we're going to be checking out uh, Joe Chaku at 6 a.m., um, The Mysterious Emergency Hospital, uh, The Dancing Prickly Great Pinch, uh, Golden Mask and Younger Sister, uh, The Beauty's Cry That Cut Through the Night, and Mimi's Nightmare. So that's going to be the next six episodes that we talk about here on the Denzi Blitz. Uh, of course... As I mentioned before, if you would like to become one of our patrons, uh, as you can see behind me, there's sort of a new backdrop for the show. Um, this is the first Denzi Blitz, I think, that we've shot on this particular set. Um, we're converting one of the rooms here at our house into something of a studio um, so that Denzi Caster and Denzi Blitz actually have a backdrop um, other than our living room. So if you want to help contribute and help make the set uh, even better, uh, you can do that by becoming one of our patrons. Go to patreon.com slash ECS network. Sign up to become a patron. Uh, it's just a little bit a month, either one, three, or five bucks. And there's bonus videos and extra content, uh, early access, and even some decision making that you guys get to make uh, when you become one of our patrons. Uh, also, uh, and, and for the record, the goal right now, $150, we need lighting. Uh, I'm lit better than I normally am, but that's because I'm in a confined space with bright walls and LED daylight light bulbs in the fixture. But it could still be better, and you guys can help with that. Um, we're trying to get three portable lighting rigs, one for here, one for 8-star anime, and one for Chopsaki Cinema. Um, you can also help us by going over to cafepress.com slash ECS Network and picking up one of our t-shirts or snazzy hats. Uh, in fact, we have a new shirt that is inspired by that guy, by Space Sheriff Gavin. So check that out. It's the Space Sheriff style shirt when you go over and check under the Denzi Caster tab. Um, and uh, last but not least, uh, we'd love for you to go over to facebook.com slash Denzi Caster and uh, like share, subscribe, all of those wonderful things, and uh, start some discussions. I'm actually going to try to do some discussions over there uh, a little more often. Uh, social media has not been one of my strong suits over the years. Uh, I do videos on Periscope, and which you can find through Twitter. Um, I do videos on Instagram now. I'm trying to do those routinely, uh, so you can check those out. But I am think I'm going to try and start doing some discussions over on, um, over on the Facebook page, too. Uh, maybe if you're watching Gavin alongside me, maybe we'll start a discussion thread on what we think of uh, this batch of episodes or Gavin so thus far or what have you. So uh, there you have it. So folks, until next time, please share, like, subscribe, all the wonderful things you do on YouTube. If you like the video, please uh, give it a thumbs up. If you like the, the show or any of the other shows here on the ECS Network, please click the subscribe button. Every little bit helps. Uh, we're shooting for 100 subscribers, to paraphrase uh, another YouTuber who has far more subscribers than we do. Um, we are shooting for 100 at the moment. Once we hit 100 subscribers, uh, then we can start saying YouTube.com slash something, and we don't have to tell people to search for ECS Network anymore. 
So there you have it, folks. I appreciate it. Thank you for letting us uh, come into your home again this week. And until next time, when we take a look at uh, episodes uh, 19 through 24, and we hit the halfway point of Space Sheriff Gavin, I might. We'll see you around.